Hello there Reason Users Cooper here and welcome to my channel and I'm going to very very quickly do a brief overview of my codec or my mapping file what I've done for the Akai Professional APC Key 25 and I say it's going to be a very very quick um, overview and it's going to be quite unbelievable the stuff I've actually packed into this particular controller I mean it's quite mind blowing you're going to see some unique stuff coming on here. So very 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 quickly this is um, as I said it's a 25 key keyboard. It's got eight endless encoders um, at the top there. I'm just going to quickly swap change the instrument a second. Uh, the RGBs are very, very nicely lit. Unfortunately, my camera doesn't quite pick them up, but they are actually lit really, really well indeed. Uh, I'm very really impressed with how these work. We've got ourselves, they refer to these as scene buttons in the manual and these are track buttons. I use these for navigation and I use these for paging, which we'll go over very quickly. So let's start off with a very simple, what I refer to as a full mapping. So as you can see, I'm going to start turning these controls on and you can see down on in the combinator there we go we've got ourselves a nice control and of course this is two-way mapping as well whoops scrolling the screen around a little bit here there we go i'll start to turn them off and you can see they start going off on the control as well what we've also got i say we've got encoders so i can obviously start wiggling the encoders and we can start moving them but these are the pages so if i move down to page two i can get to the other set of uh, knobs here so I can control up to 32 knobs on the actual controller and I can control over 120, about 130 buttons. It should be 160, but I've um, allocated some buttons to do some other things and I'll go over that. So let's actually uh, have a quick look at the buttons, what we've got going on so far. So I'm just gonna quickly switch instruments and we're gonna take control of this. So box standard, um, as you expect, we've got a standard toggle buttons. That's nothing special there. We've got some trigger buttons. Okay, that's a little bit unusual. So, okay, that's quite nice that we've got them trigger buttons. So as soon as you put them on, take you off, it goes. And let me go up to another instrument over here. And we've got so another set of, um, we can do with the buttons. And that's a select. So you can see here, I'm now going around selecting the different waveforms. So the last start style of button I've got, if you look at the top, I'm gonna to be affecting down here. As I press the second one, third, fourth, we've got ourselves radio buttons. And what's more, we can jump from one rack extension over to another. As you can see, that light's gone off. We're jumping back and forth between the two. So these radio buttons work across rack extensions and they can work into VSTs as well. So here we go into a, from a VST to this rack extension over back to this rack extension. There is nothing stopping you from actually allocating the radio buttons, say, to the, the main mixer to control the solo and the mutes from there. So the next quick thing we're going to look at here is, as you can see, I'm wiggling my knobs up the top here. I've got no control. The only thing I've got control at the moment is just really doing the waveforms and the uh, octaves. So what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to hold down the special acid button, whoop, whoop, put it into party mode. I'm going to move this control, this control, this control, and this control, and I'm going to do the ADSR, why not, while I'm here. So let's quickly move them. I'm going to let go, and I'm going to start twiddling my knobs. And as you can see, I've now got control, so I can now control this ADSR. Boom, 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 boom. I can control the drive, the frequency, the resonance, and the envelope, uh, sorry, the envelope there. So that's the envelope, that one there. Cool, that works all really well, but there's more. What I'm gonna quickly do is see if I can fill it all onto the screen at the same time. I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna pull this down to here, hold the thing, make a copy of it. Let's see if we can get them both on the screen at the same time. Probably not, there we go, we're kind of there. Boom, boom, boom. So at the moment, this one's got the um, focus, and you can see I've got, I'm moving my ADSR. Let's actually go back up the rack. Now this one's got the focus, and again, now here we go, we're moving my ADSR. So any old project I open up, which has got a, a monotone in it, they will start working with the ADSR on there as well. We've got ourselves a Kong mode. This is a, a scale mode. We can obviously choose what key that we wish to have it in. We can just simply change the key and say, oh yeah, that's the key we're gonna have it in. We've got a choice of quite a few different um, scales which we can actually select from. And also, this keyboard's actually been split into two. So this top section is separate from the key. So I can point the keys at an instrument, I could point these at an effect, or a player, or even another combinator altogether, or you know, a totally different instrument. So they could be playing different instruments because these are now playable, but they're scaled. These are obviously normal keys. We're now in what I refer to as the loop mode. As you can see, I can um, select different loops. You can see my loop bars just moving around, selecting different loops. I can set it up so when I hit a, um, a loop, it's gonna auto start, so it's now gonna start playing. I can set it up so when I, this is known as soft looping, so once I, it finishes the loop, it will then jump 
to the next loop, it won't just jump straight away. Or I can set it for hard looping, which is the equivalent of it jumping straight away. So every time I hit the key, it either restart again, or I can just jump around to different places. If I wish to, I can obviously just grab this, grab this to here, to here, to here, hit that and hit that, and that loop's now set. So there's that nice big loop. We've got other modes, like I've got an auto stop, so when it gets to the actual end of the, the loop, it'll stop. So now we've got ourselves a one-shot mode. I've got an alternate take, so now if I was to hit record, it would actually keep going on and it just keep doing alternate takes, so obviously I can keep playing and playing and playing and playing as long as I want. I've actually also got a simple um, undo button here as well. Um, there's nothing really to undo, there we go, let's undo these. Do it. Do, do, do. I can reset the automation override and I can tap the tempo out. We're now actually into my favorite mode, which will allow me to actually copy one oscillator to another oscillator, um, quite straightforward. So uh, if we actually quickly come here and actually click on here, where are we here? You can see there's a difference in the unison and the modifier is slightly different as well between the two. So what I can actually do is I'm gonna, um, doesn't matter if I've got it, I don't have to actually have number one highlighted, we'll highlight it again. I'm gonna copy that, so now I've just copied that into a buffer. I'm gonna move into oscillator number two. Again, I don't have to highlight it. I can just hit this button and that's it. Here we go, you can see it's actually synced up. Now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna come over onto this particular uh, Europa and if you notice, the third one hasn't been set, so I'm going to actually just highlight it. What does it sound like? Sounds like that. And now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to morph, which was the oscillator over here, into this one here. So I've just got to move a little bit so I can get to my keyboard. And I'm moving the knob to do the morphing. And you might be halfway through and go, actually, that sounds great, but what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to finish off the morphine. There we go, and I'm going to pull this down, and you can actually see both of these at the same time, and you can see all these settings here on this particular oscillator are exactly the same as these settings here. In fact, it should really be an oscillator one, but because we duplicated one to number two, it would be in the same anyway. So there you go. So we can actually morph between different um, instruments. And there's nothing actually stopping me copying this these, these parameters and actually morphing onto, say, Thor, or into another actual device. The effects are very, very bizarre. You get some unusual effects, but hey, that's uh, the fun of playing with it. This is my randomization mode, which I absolutely love. I'm just gonna quickly just prep it up very, very quickly. And so I believe this is the one that's got the focus. So at the moment, when I hit this key, we're on oscillator three, we're gonna start seeing things sort of start randomizing. And they're randomizing a very small amount. As I go up the knobs, we're gonna get a bigger and bigger jump. Obviously, it can randomize a very small amount, because it's, it's random, but the randomization uh, width gets wider, and as I play it down, it gets very, very tiny. So by playing it actually, doing it tiny, <laughs> is slightly better for the sound effects because look at that one has totally changed that sound. This is a debugging mode. So obviously as I'm going through, I can sort of set up different debug sort of levels within the actual program itself. I can actually then start pumping out like all my different parameters, what's going on. It saves me having to keep stopping and starting. I can, I said I had to learn what um, codec was all about. And this is a way I actually learned to find out exactly what were the different functions um, I, was, I was calling, um, how frequently were they being called, what was going on. Um, and I can obviously say like here, we've got Ray Oh, look, it's, it's, it's wired up to a solo, and we know that solo was to do with that VST, so we're obviously playing around. It even tells me it's a snare, kick, and whatever. Oh, retrig, so that was actually hitting on the, the, the monotone. So, the very last function actually I'm going to show you with, I'm going to start this off, so we're going to start the play off. It's playing away, boom, 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 and when we get to the end, bosh, we've got ourselves auto stop. So, if you want to get a full in depth of what we can actually do with this device or learn about how I actually built this up, then please follow my videos. Thank you for watching and bye for now.